but the way of the wicked God brings to ruin. given them food. So she set, set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb, that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have, have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. 
Then they wept aloud again. Hmm. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We will read the psalm responsibly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. Whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them. Who keeps promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed. And food to those who are hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He saves the orphan, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, Your God O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. A reading from the Greek Bible, the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf, nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that, the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory 
One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the strength. And to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. in the messes that we create, especially when we love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and understanding, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Today, we will offer four perspectives on our gospel in light of the events this past week, week which rocked our country and will continue to rock our country. Members of our homiletical huddle last week offered their perspective one to another, and today we will offer them to you. Each will offer their own perspective, and then someone will respond. And then after all four of us have offered a perspective with responses, we will open it up to the congregation for your response. All of this will take under 12 minutes, just in case you're worried. So we have three reverends and Karen. <laughs> and uh, this is the Reverend Allie Lux. Many of you know the Reverend Malcolm Henderson, and many of you know Karen Casper. And I'm a part of the and we meet weekly um, to discuss the scripture for the following week, the gospel for the following week. And this last Wednesday when we met, uh, we decided to use the scripture that was actually offered for last Sunday. So you've got to hear the gospel twice. And uh, it just made sense for us to talk about how we are called to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, 
with all of our soul and with all of our understanding, and our neighbors as ourselves in light of what we have just experienced. So, shall we begin offering what we once offered to each other? I'll go first. Um, so uh, what it was, I think it's really, really important that, um, oh, it is hard. Okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah. That um, we all have a lot of feelings about everything that's happened. And um, I think it's really important that we acknowledge these feelings, that we sit with these feelings, that it's okay to have these feelings, to accept that about all of us. Um, a lot of us have a lot of different feelings, I'm um, sorry, of um, anger, of anxiety, um, uncertainty. Some of us are numb. We don't know what to feel. Others are happy. Um, and we have to acknowledge all those feelings. And um, I think once we sit with these feelings, that's fine, but we also know that we can't just stay stuck in those feelings, that we need to move beyond them. That's not such an easy thing to do. Um, sometimes we need help. Um, we need to look to each other for help. We need to support each other. We need to give each other some encouragement. I think if we can't find that forgiveness um, or learn to love ourselves, we can't love our neighbors. Um, and I think it's important for us as Christians that we, uh, we keep that love and we show that love to each other. Is your microphone on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the interesting thing is that this event happened in the United States of America. There are so many other people around the world that are not, did not have a vote, which includes me as a Canadian. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Manifestation of God's divine love. 
each of us. You are a unique manifestation of the mind and heart and love and wisdom of God, divine energy of divine love. And I shared in our homiletical huddle that though each of us is dazzlingly unique with our own thoughts and experiences and gifts and questions, we're not separate. And the problem comes when we think we're the only one who's unique, or some of us are unique and others aren't. So we are all unique. I know, it seems to be coming in and out, but we are not separate. We're like waves in an ocean. And so we are in that ocean of love. And another thing we talked about in our homiletical huddle was that we often teach in the church about Jesus' unconditional love. And so that means that everyone belongs without any conditions. Everyone belongs. We are waves in this beautiful ocean of divine love. Everyone belongs. As you are. Because your belonging is unconditional. But I, I also shared at a homiletical huddle that a, a friend of mine, who is a phenomenal preacher, in fact, he has a PhD in homiletics, I heard him, Kyle Brooks, I'll say, I want to make sure I give him credit for this idea. I heard him preach once, and he says, we've kind of gotten so focused on unconditional love that we forget what that means in our day-to-day -day life. And what it means is love under all conditions. So it means we love when things are easy, and we love when things are hard, and we love our neighbor when we agree with each other, and we love our neighbor when we disagree with each other. And I really see it in the scripture in this last few weeks. We're in the book of Mark. And Jesus is on his journey to Jerusalem with his friends, and he meets all kinds of people along the way. People he disagrees with, people he agrees with, people he heals, people who challenge him. And just before we get to the today's scripture, Jesus enters Jerusalem very triumphantly. We'll hear it again during our Easter season. It's the it's Palm Sunday. Jesus comes in and everyone loves him and they yell their loud hosannas and they put their cold, their clothes for him to ride on and he rides in on a donkey. I'm just going to hold it. That might be better. I apologize. It might get worse before. But in that love or other all conditions. Oh no. May, may I borrow this? Yes. <laughs> Done. Fabulous. Thank you, Karen. Um, oh, so Jesus, is it me? I'm talking about this. I think it's, I'm the problem. Um, maybe I'll turn this off, and then it will help. Not compete. Okay. So Jesus, Jesus rides triumphantly into Jerusalem. And then is the scribes and the teachers of the law then plot to kill him. So, beginning of the week, triumphant, by the end of the week, is going to be crucified. So, divine love under all conditions. It's not about what other people think of us. It's about um, following the love of God in our daily life when things are easy and joyful and when they're hard and above all loving God and loving neighbor under all conditions is the model that Jesus gives us I live by that only because I don't know what's going to happen <laughs> so um, I love what you said about how we are unique divine, dazzling manifestations of God, but not separate. And um, I think 
as humans, we try to separate ourselves from another. We try to be not only unique, but maybe a better unique, so that somebody can be a lesser unique. And when we get into that kind of separating, which is different from the kind of separating that God did, when God separated the land from the sea, or the stars from the sky, or the humans from the animals, when we get into the kind of separating where one is better and the other is lesser, it creates a huge mess. Mess. We have been given all that we need to turn those messes into loving conditions, in all conditions. We have been called to love God with all our heart, our mind, our souls, our understanding, and our neighbors as ourselves. In these moments before us, where we have felt all of these feelings, and when we have had a history of being better than others, let us remember God's call to us. That uh, strikes me as uh, a of the fact that uh, too often the church gets caught into the extremes of good and bad. And uh, the way we live is we live in process. We, each of us individually, live in process, making mistakes, struggling, finding new ways. And this country is in the same process. It's, made, it's making a mistake, or it's not, it's growing, or it's having a, a bad day. And I think that uh, we need to see it in perspective, that God is present in all that goes on in our history, and in the history of this country, and the history of the world. And uh, this is just a moment in the unfolding of God in history, and it's, been, it's a mixed bag, always a mixed bag. It's never perfect. It's never all, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, Sharon, and Don. We'd like to offer you now the opportunity to come forward if you have a perspective to offer. I don't know how many minutes are left, but I think it's three. <laughs> <laughs> Toward them, toward us, but toward them. Oh, 
Restore the fortunes of the oppressed. Let captives find freedom. And refugees come home with songs of gladness and shouts of joy. Let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. We pray for the city of Gloucester. Come and dwell with us to bless and keep us. Save the strong from the perils of their pride and let the weak find refuge in your presence. Let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. We pray for loved ones who are in need of physical healing. 
courage to overcome fears, strength to overcome addiction, and resources to be housed and, and housing and food secure, especially Dolores, Lois, Randy, Fozzie, Gordon and Beth, Carmine, Dee, Rosalie, Terry, and family. Have mercy upon those who need your help. Draw near to them with compassion and give them the faith to be made whole. Let your will be done. We pray for loved ones who are in your heavenly presence. Are there any to be named? Grant them peace and calm our grief. Let your will be done. Sovereign God, Keep us watching and working for the promise of your heavenly realm until all the earth rejoices at your coming in glory. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. Amen. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we honor Armistice Day today. Amen. Amen. God is ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Let us turn to God in honesty and humility to confess our sins. Praying together, merciful God, forgive our systemic sins, that way we build and support and collaborate with oppression. Open our eyes to the injustice of wealth and inequality. Open our hearts to writing our societal wrongs. Forgive our excuses, our apathy, our colors, and our only for our benefit, for that of our nations. Help us follow Christ. Help us build your beloved community where all belong and all may flourish. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Christ is here right now, making peace among us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and make good your vows to the most high.
attending emergency surgery this morning. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout for joy. Of your grace, you have Jesus to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your reign, and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the life, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, the ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, Dying we destroy our death, rising, we destroy our life, Christ Jesus, come Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the Hallelujah. but of the Lord. It is to be made ready for those who love God and want to love God more. So come if you have followed, come if you have stumbled, come if you have been here often, or if you've never been here before. Come because it is God who invites you. It is one of God's purposes that those who want to find God will find God here. Please join me for our post of meeting prayer on page 13. God of glory, in this holy feast of the and I shall honor with Christ, and with that great multitude of faithful, those who honor and serve us no more, and worship the night and day in your temple. Lead us to the paths of righteousness, and guide us to the springs of the water of life. Amen. May the love of God of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit gladden your hearts and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our reception and stand as you are able. Take my life and let it be number 707. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.